We're all about to dive headfirst into this soap opera of chaos that is the Fannie Willis saga. So picture this, guys. It's a career that's a little bit less rocket to stardom and a little bit more train veering off the tracks. And we got front row seats to the show. So just a couple of days ago, I served you guys up the latest dish of the Fannie Willis gourmet series of mishaps, right? We zeroed in on this so-called key witness, the knight in shining armor that was poised to sweep in and clear Fannie Willis's name once and for all. Y'all remember that? Ah, the anticipation was real, wasn't it? But here's the kicker. And a plot twist is literally like so ironic. Even the so-called leftist media couldn't even help but spill the beans on this one. So our hero, he pretty much did anything but save the day. Instead, uh, instead of a great exoneration, which is kind of what the left was expecting, we got a massive facepalm moment that was worthy of an epic meme. So get your snacks ready, guys. Uh, this, this case literally just kind of keeps on surprising us with stuff that you really couldn't even make up if you tried. Now, before I share this next clip with you guys, all I ask is that you take one second, drop a quick like for the video. I totally appreciate you guys. And I want to thank you so much for always sharing these videos. It totally helps out the channel. So thank you guys so much. When you told me that their relationship started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you obtain that knowledge from? It was, I was speculating. Um, I didn't have a, um, No one told me I was speculating. Oh, what a plot twist we had here, folks, right? So picture this, our so-called hero, Terrence Bradley, he steps up to the witness stand, and it's kind of like watching a, a comedy of errors unfold, right? Every time he opens his mouth, it's like, I'm not sure, I'm just guessing here, or who? Like, never heard of this guy. Like, talk about a confidence booster for Fannie Willis, right? <laughs> but wait, there's more. So just when you think it just couldn't get any more sitcom worthy, we uncover the jackpot. So Terrence Bradley's text messages, and oh boy, you know, do they spill the tea. Without giving too much away here, let's just say that they're not exactly love letters that would make Fanny's day. So here we are, popcorn in hand as the drama unfolds, like the season finale of our favorite guilty pleasure TV show, right? So the courtroom's buzzing, right? The Trump team's attorney is like a magician pulling rabbits out of a hat with his new evidence. And we're all just kind of here along for the ride. So get ready, guys, because if this was a TV show, we would definitely be renewing it for another season based on entertainment value alone. But I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button for this circus, and we're going to see where this roller coaster takes us. So check this out. And on January the 5th, 2024, at approximately 9.49 a.m., there's text messages that are exchanged between Ms. Merchant and Mr. Bradley. And the text messages go like just date, and that's from Miss Merchant. Miss Merchant says, do you think it started before she hired him? Bradley, who we now know from Defense Exhibit 39, has been texting with Miss Merchant for a number of months. This is not the first time. This is months within the, the communications between the two. Mr. Bradley says, absolutely. Now, absolutely is not a speculative word. That's not speculation. That's a definitive statement. <laughs> All right, everyone. So gather around for today's episode of Courthouse Gossip, right? The unofficial soap opera. So in today's juicy installment, we dive into the scandalous text exchanges between Ashley Merchant and Terrence Bradley. So picture this, guys. You got Phil Holloway, our intrepid Twitter correspondent drops a massive bombshell that basically has everybody clutching their pearls. Oh my God. <laughs> but seriously, guys. So we got text flying in court revealing a plot twist that's worthy of a daytime Emmy. You got uh, Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade's love story reportedly began before the credits rolled on her pre-office life contradicting her sworn testimony that it all started in 2022. Can somebody like cue the dramatic music, please? I mean, seriously, guys. So Ashley, depicted in vibrant green text bubbles, plays the role of the inquiring mind. Meanwhile, you got Terrence, our gray messenger of truth, insists with the conviction of a telenovela villain that their latest romance was 
absolutely not a product of office dynamics. Instead, it blossomed in the most romantic of settings, a municipal court conference, because nothing says love like legal proceedings, right? So Terrence, doubling down on his insider knowledge, suggests that their paths crossed and sparks flew amidst the gavel bangs, and all the while, Nathan was still married. <laughs> oh, what a scandal, right guys? But wait, there is a twist. Our plot thickens even more with a cameo from the Megyn Kelly show, where even more textual evidence is unveiled, proving that the saga of Willis and Wade is the gift that just keeps on giving. Or was that syphilis? Anyway, so Terrence, our reluctant yet exclusive source, hints at a clandestine meeting point so secret that it's practically a plot device to keep viewers hooked for the next season. So as we conclude today's episode, just remember in the courtroom of love and politics, the only thing that's more tangled than the legal jargon are the heartstrings of the protagonists. I don't know, I can't make this stuff up guys. So stay tuned for even more revelations in our next episode of Courthouse Gossip, the unofficial soap opera, where the only thing more unpredictable than the plot twists are the sworn testimonies. And um, I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. Let, let me just say that. I am going to be able to attract the best and the brightest minds to that office. You're sitting with someone today that actually wants to make a difference because they deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees, because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket. So welcome back to the latest episode of Political Theater, The Chronicles of Fulton County, where the drama is always dialed up to 11 and the plot twists are about as rich as the characters. In today's thrilling saga, we find our protagonist, Fanny Willis, in a tale that's part Shakespearean drama, part modern day soap opera. So once upon a campaign trail, Fanny promised to be the fearless dragon slayer of corruption within the realm of the Fulton County DA's office. But there is a plot twist. So it turns out she might just be the dragon in disguise itself. Oh, the irony, huh? Kind of like a Trojan horse, right? It's kind of like watching a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, but only to realize that the rabbit is actually running the magic show. So the plot thickens as our leading lady entangled in a love story worthy of Telenova basically finds herself in this scandalous liaison with a married man back in the yesteryears of 2019. Now, if we go ahead and fast forward to her reign as DA and she's handpicked for a high stakes case by none other than the White House. And who's by her side? Ah, Nathan Wade, of course, because what's a political drama without a little bit of romance, right? But wait, there's more. In a move that would make even the most seasoned soap opera writers blush, Fanny hires an unqualified sweetheart as a special prosecutor directing a cool $650,000 of the public's gold into his coffers. Together, they both embark on extravagant escapades, lavishly funded by unsuspecting taxpayers, all in the name of justice, or shall we say, the anti-Trump witch hunt. So as the curtain rises in the final act with closing arguments underway and the judge ready to drop the gavel, Fanny attempts one last dramatic flourish, introducing new evidence in a bid to steal the spotlight once again. Will she succeed in delaying the inevitable or is this the final bow upon us? So dear viewers, stay tuned. The drama in Fulton County is far from over and in this theater, the show must go on. Will justice prevail or will our characters find themselves in a twist of fate worthy of a season finale cliffhanger? Only time will tell in political theater, the chronicles of Fulton County. Over an hour and a half for argument to be divided amongst themselves if they've, as they've already agreed. And so to effectuate that, I have, I'll have the uh, time uh, queued up and we'll start the clock running and you all can see fit to divide that as you uh, would like. And obviously I've allowed uh, the same amount of time for the state as well. Uh, before we get into that, I believe there may have been a few things just to uh, clean up as part of the record, uh, specifically since we last convened uh, counsel on behalf of Mr. Roman had submitted a defense exhibit 39. And uh, if there are any ob objections that wanted to be placed on the record on behalf of the state, we can do that now. Uh, but at a minimum, I think the intention was that I would be admitting that uh, collectively uh, as an exhibit, if nothing else, just for uh, appellate purposes for the record. Mr. Abadi, anything the state wants to add as it relates to exhibit 39? No objections from the state. I have a copy for the court reporter. I printed a copy out and then I sent it. All right. If you've got that marked and stamped, we'll provide that to the court reporter. All right. And then, as I'd indicated as well on Tuesday, both parties since 
the uh, close of the evidence on the 16th had followed up. Uh, now I think both sides have made requests to reopen the evidence. On behalf of the defense, there were some issues with uh, cell phone records, and the state has uh, found an additional uh, witness that they would like to present. And the instruction I provided on Tuesday was that for today, I think we've reached the point where I'd like to hear more of how some of the legal arguments apply to what has already been presented. And it may already be possible for me to make a decision uh, without those needing to be material uh, to that decision. So that's why we're here today. I wanted to make sure we held this time because it is a bit of a logistical challenge to get everyone in a room together. Uh, so, but recognizing that, um, again, in the interest of efficiency, if both parties want to reserve part of their time to argue as if those proffered uh, exhibits have been admitted, feel free to make whatever arguments you, you would like. And if, in fact, it turns out that I do need those to be part of the record to make a decision, then we'd have to come back and we will do those in accordance with the rules of evidence. Ah, gather around, dear viewers, as we embark on the latest chapter of the Chronicles of Fannie Willis, the nightmare scenario. In a twist of fate that could only be described as dramatically ironic, we find ourselves perched on the edge of our seats, popcorn in hand, eagerly awaiting the next move in this legal chess game. In my case, cup of coffee. So here's the scoop, guys. The climax of our tale hangs in the balance. Should our intrepid hero, or perhaps anti-hero, Fanny Willis, be ousted from her starring role, or if the entire saga gets abruptly canceled, I mean, case dismissed? Well, you'll have the privilege of being in the know before the opening credits even roll. Yes, my friends, we are possibly, probably, almost certainly heading toward what can only be described as the season finale that Fanny never wanted but secretly starred in. And, and let me just say this, the confidence emanating from our narrator is just so real, you would think that they were right in the script themselves. But alas, with all the great tales of arrogance and just desserts, it seems our Fanny may have danced just a little bit too close to the flame. Or to kind of put it in the vernacular of the streets, she just effed around and is on the cusp of finding out. In the grand tradition of poetic justice, it appears the universe has a sense of humor after all. So what's the moral of the story? Stay tuned because the drama is far from over. As we close this chapter, remember in the final words of Fanny Willis, the only certainty is uncertainty. Appreciate y'all for watching the video. Hit the like button if you didn't already. Thanks for sharing it. I'll see y'all in the next one.